I'm here today to show you one of my favorite recipes. It's called cheddar, the uh, zucchini cheddar soup. And it's an adaptation from the Uncheese cookbook. And I'm crazy about it, make it as often as I can. So today I'm going to have posted the recipe for seven cups, but I'm tripling that. So when you see the quantities I'm using, you won't have to do that much, but I want to because I package it, freeze it, and then I can pull things out of what I call my freezer library for a very quick meal. The soup begins with vegetables that are cooked, just put into water and cook, not even broth. At first I thought, oh, I can't cook this without broth, but I'm doing it in water the way the directions say, and it's fabulous. And then to add flavor, I'll put some of that vegetable broth with some vegetables in the blender with things like tamari and nutritional yeast and uh, tahini, that sesame seed paste, and some red bell pepper to give it that color of a cheese sauce and some cashews. Oh my gosh, is this a fabulous soup. Everyone who's had it loves it. Uh, so let me begin. I just wanna show you the vegetables that I've used. I have zucchini here that I like cubed into neat little pieces because it looks terrific in the soup, but you don't have to do it that way. I have onion in a very um, kind of consistent dice but you don't have to do it that way. But I'm gonna show you how I do that and why I love this machine. It's called the Vidalia Chop Wizard. I have no benefit for promoting it, but I want you to watch this. I take my watch off because <laughs> I did a bunch of onion at one time and because of the force of the blow, it ended up kind of messing up my watch and I had to take it in and have it fixed and pay for that. And I thought, I'm not doing that again. I take it off now. So. I'm going to show you how I do the zucchini, both by hand and with the chop wizard. So I cut my zucchini in half, some nice size, and this on the, the standard recipe calls for three medium zucchini. And watch this, boom, boom, and boom. I have these wonderful, even diced pieces of zucchini. Now, if I didn't have a Vidalia Chop Wizard and didn't really want one, you may be thinking, I don't want another piece of something in my kitchen. No problem. Just cut your zucchini any way you want. It doesn't have to be consistent. I just happen to like it that way. And you've got your dice there. I just happen to have, gosh, how many pounds did I end up with? Something like, um, three, five, six pounds of zucchini. That's a lot of cutting. And look at this with the onion. The onion, if you're using this, is sliced down from root to um, stem. And I'll just do half of it so I can show you. All right, the other half, hand cut, and bam. That's the part that kind of messed up my watch. <laughs> and sorry for the sound. Bam. Okay, now, again, I have a very nice dice for that onion, and it took me seconds, and I got this entire bowl that quickly. However, without that, easy, I'm going through the onion. I'm sorry my back is to you. There's no better way to do it right now. And then, so I sliced through from stem to... Um, root and then I'm just going through again and look I have a very nice dice with that so this isn't difficult to do I just like nice and fast and easy so what I'm going to do this is one of my favorite pans I like all clad because it's a good thick um, based um, stainless steel uh, line of cookware and it doesn't matter even what order you put this in, I'm throwing in my zucchini and my onion. I had three big onions. I had, as I said, let me think. Um, three, 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 uh, 
I don't know, it's about six pounds of zucchini, but the recipe will direct you as to what to do with, with a standard, or uh, with a standard recipe, but you can double and triple, I tripled. All right, then I add just plain water. Eight cups and another four, what is that? 12 cups of water. In the standard recipe with the one onion and the three zucchini, you are going to use um, four cups of water. Okay, that's it. So I'm going to stop the video. I'll be back again after it's cooked for 20 minutes. So I'm going to cover it to bring it to heat. It's going to simmer for 20 minutes. Then I'm going to bring it back here and bring you back here and show you how it's finished. Boom, boom, boom. Easy stuff. <laughs> Bye. Hello, I'm back. I have the pot of zucchini and onion that has simmered for, I'm gonna say about 30 minutes. As long as it's tender enough that it is absolutely, it has no resistance, that's fine. And what I have here is a pot of broth now created by just the vegetables. Remember, I didn't put it in broth. I'm going to put six cups of the broth in the blender. Actually, I don't have to do it this way. The blender has a measuring cup. I'll just put it directly in. And it doesn't have to be that much. The point here is that in your recipe, because remember, I've got a triple batch here. And really, what I want mainly is the broth. If you want your soup to be chunky soup, oh man, here, there. I had hit the top cover. I wasn't for, far enough over. If you want your soup to be chunky soup, as I do, I like the pieces of vegetable in there, surrounded by this cheesy, wonderful broth, then you want broth with just a little bit of the veggies. Okay, I think that's enough. Let's see, how many cups is that? Oh, I could put just a little bit more, but I don't want it to overfill. I don't believe it will. Okay. All right, then I'm gonna add the rest of what makes this a cheese soup. I'm throwing in some oats to give it a little bit of, of um, uh, texture and vol and, and um, uh, thickness. And this is instant oats. If you don't have instant oats, I use organic. I use um, gluten-free. If you don't have instant oats, but you have rolled oats, put them in your blender for just a little bit. And it, that's what this is. It's just broken up. As a matter of fact, when we travel and we bring our own cups and we don't know that we can, because we're whole food plant-based, we don't eat animal product, we're pretty well left with oatmeal in the morning and fruit. And, and if, if we're in a country where savory is breakfast, like in Asia where they serve noodles, we're fine. But if like when we were in England, we had oatmeal every day or a porridge every day. We just brought our instant oats, added boiling water to it, had berries we got from the uh, market and had marvelous breakfasts every day. So I'm putting in the uh, instant oats. I'm also putting in the thing that gives the umami, the thing that gives the cheese flavor, which is nutritional yeast. It looks like this. I get unfortified. The fortified nutritional yeast is great, but I can't have uh, folic acid. If any of you, here I go. If any of you have ever been tested and you have a genetic mutation called MTHFR, sounds like a nasty word, <laughs> MTHFR, um, it means that you can't uh, assimilate folic acid. You can assimilate folate from all your greens and all your beans. Uh, and grains, but not folic acid, which is an additive. Um, and it's part of the additives that they put in nutritional yeast because it's very healthy, but I just can't assimilate it. So there you go. I've got some wonky genes and I'm 70 and I am going to go for another 20 or 30 years, knock on wood, even though I've got some wonky genes. All right, I'm adding to that cashew nuts because they give a, a real creaminess. I'm adding to that tahini, which is sesame seed paste. 
It's just sesame seeds ground up, nothing else. And I get mine from Trader Joe's where they're very well priced. If you go to a, uh, a nutrition store or a health food store, Quite often, well, you'll always find tahini, but quite often it'll be two and three times as much. This, I think, was three sixty nine or something like that. And I roasted red bell pepper in order to give me a half, one and a half cups. And it took me, gosh, three nice size red bell pepper. I'm Italian, and I grew up roasting bell peppers and then having them with a touch of olive oil and a touch of salt and pepper. I don't do oils anymore either. They're processed, but um, I'm used to this food and absolutely adore it. Well, you're going to want it because it's going to give your soup the color of cheese and the flavor that adds a little bit of sort of a sweetness to it. Then I'm adding tahini. No, 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 not tahini, tamari. Tamari is a fermented soy sauce, and I always get the gluten-free. You can find it not gluten-free. You can also find it lower sodium, and I have that as well. Um, I just had this bottle out. And if you don't want to roast your own peppers, you can get these from Trader Joe's too, fire-roasted red peppers. I tripled this recipe, so tripling the recipe would call, probably call for two jars, and you drain them and hold on to the... the juice from it um, because it's a wonderful, rich flavor that you can put in broth soups to add a um, almost a sweetness and, and um, oh gosh, just an additional flavor without even having to put in bell peppers. And then I have a little bit of salt. I have oregano. Gosh, I hope I can blend this and not go over the top. It might. Ah! And then I added some dill seed, not dill weed, dill seed. This is different. It's actually a seed, almost like a cumin seed or coriander seed, and it does make a difference. Uh, don't use the dill weed if you don't have this. And then I've got some chopped garlic and I have lemon juice. Now what might happen is this might go over the top. So you know what I'm gonna do? I haven't tripled the recipe before and I'm worried about this. So I'm gonna take some of this broth away and see what happens because we don't want a disaster. I want this wonderful soup the way I've had it before. I've doubled the recipe before. As a matter of fact, my feeling is if you're gonna make a mess, make a mess worthwhile and double or triple recipes then have a library of frozen foods in your freezer that you can then grab for a quick meal. We do that constantly. I'll go out. We have a freezer in the garage as well, and that helps. Now, I'm sorry about this sound. Um, uh, well, I'm just sorry about it. So let me get this done. Make really good friends with somebody and get it for your birthday, Christmas, Mother's Day, Valentine's Day. Uh, they, you can get them at Costco on sale. Um, they are marvelous because they have the heaviest motor of any of the, I'll call them um, um, non-commercial blenders. And even they can rival some of the commercial blenders. And without this, it's harder to do some well, for example, my smoothie in the morning. My smoothie has whole hard vegetables, a carrot, a celery, a big fat beet, um, a half of a lemon, 
Um, and then a bunch of frozen things like frozen banana, massive greens, um, uh, pomegranate, um, cranberry, all of those frozen. And boom, with a little bit of almond milk and then water, it comes out, well, as smooth as this. Um, couldn't do that with a regular blender. And a food processor doesn't give you that result either. So did I show you this? I don't think I showed this to you. See, it's just soup, but rather flavorless because what was it? Onion, zucchini, water. Now, this is where we get the flavor. Look at this. Doesn't that look like a cheese sauce? Mm. Let's see if you can see this a little bit more closely. Look at that. Oh, sorry. <laughs> oh my gosh, that's so good. All right. I'll put all this in. I don't like wasting anything in the blender, so I, I just keep blending and blending. Now I learned something, and let's see if I can get this done. On the blades, you have some of the food stuck, and I don't want it stuck, and it's hard to get it off the blade. So I am going to turn it on gently so that the blades, whoop, so that the blades clean themselves by some, yeah, 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 by centrif uh, centrifugal force. And then all I'm cleaning are these flat surfaces of blender. And you're probably thinking, man, you're leaving us. Just let it be. And I can't, I can't, <laughs> I can't waste anything. All right. Now this should be dinner tonight. But I already have something else planned. I just wanted to do this to show you. Now, this is my soup. I'm going to put it back on the stove in on, on a, a, let's say, medium-low heat to thicken it. And it will thicken. Why? Because we have that oatmeal in there. Whole grain, plant-based. Everything in here is whole grain, plant-based, no oil, no egg, no animal product, no butter, um, all whole foods, and it will thicken and it will taste as good as it looks. If I want, if you want, now please don't ever think that when you get a recipe, it is etched in stone. You taste it and you think, hmm, I think this would be good with smoked paprika, or I think this would be good with, oh, as a matter of fact, I'll do that after we're finished. I'm gonna put some cayenne in there. I like a little, pshh. or harissa, jarred harissa sauce. You can get that at Trader Joe's. You can get it anywhere, but I like their brand. A little of that because it, pshh, it's like fire, a little bit, uh, unless you want a lot. Anyway, I'm done. I will post this with the recipe. Um, visit me on nansimmonson.com. Watch for me on Facebook and Instagram. I am whole food, plant-based, dedicated to the movement of getting more people any age, but especially we baby boomers who quite frankly are falling apart to have 20 and 30 and 40 more years, depending on your age. Like the Blue Zone people, we could do it. We just have to make some lifestyle adjustments and I know we will. Bye.